I'm Carter! I'm Ryder! And I'm Aaron! We're your CCHS Newsroom, and we're your hosts. And we're here to inform you about the news from the first quarter. Come along for the ride! This year's field show theme is imprisonment, and we will be interviewing a few people about their solos. Hi, I'm Cole Ross. I'm here with Maggie Weaver, interviewing her about a solo in the field show. What grade are you in? I'm in 12th grade, and I'm a senior. What instrument do you play? I play the flute. How do you feel about your solo in the field show? Uh, I really love my solo. It's very pretty, and it's fun to do, and it's right in the middle of the field show. All right, thank you. I'm Kai Benzbacher, and I'm here with Megan Walker, and I'm going to ask her a couple questions. What grade are you in? I'm a junior. What instrument do you play? Alto saxophone. And how does your solo make you feel in the field show? It's not quite perfect yet. Sorry, Julie. I'm Riley Queen here with Lathan McAvee of the Clark County Marching Band. I'm in the band. He is. What grade are you in, Lathan? I'm a senior. What instrument do you play for the Clark County Band? I play the snare. How does your solo make you feel? Um, you know, it makes me feel pretty good. I'm Riley Queen here with Chess Jones. What grade are you in? I'm a sophomore. What instrument do you play for the band? I play the tenor drums. And how do you feel about your solo in the Clark County Field Show? Pretty confident. Thank you. I'm with Trinity Little here today from the cross country team and we're going to be asking her a few questions about the 2023 season. How do you feel the team has performed like this year? Um, I think the girls times keep dropping from the first race. We had a lot of new runners so they were just getting the feel of it. The boys are very competitive and they improve every race. Stay is coming up. Uh, how do you think the team will perform? Um, I think we will do good if we try hard. We definitely are as ready as we're going to get. I think the boys, I think from both teams, we both have a chance of um, people qualifying individually. Okay, and uh, do you have any words of advice for people that are wanting to join next year or maybe any freshmen that are coming? I think if you want a sport that doesn't take up too much time and there's not really a lot of fighting, I mean, you all go out and run, then this is a sport for you. But if you don't like running, don't do it because we do a lot of running. Okay, thank you. I'm with Mason McDaniel here today from the cross country team, and we're going to be asking him a few questions from the 2023 season. How do you feel you've performed this season? I think I've done pretty good. And with state coming up, how do you think you'll perform there? Uh, right now I'm ranked top 10, so hopefully top 10 in state. And do you have any advice you'd want to give to any freshmen or people wanting to join next year? Um, it's fun, and it's not as bad as people say it is. Thank you. Hi, I'm Riley Queen, here with... Miranda Holly And Katherine Schmitz. What grade are you two in? I'm a senior. I'm also a senior. What are some of the responsibilities that come with being a cheer captain? I say the main responsibility is making sure that the team knows when to be serious and when it's time for fun. Because it's definitely a difficult balance to figure out. It takes a while. I'd say about the same thing. It's just making sure everyone is doing their jobs. and uh, yeah. How did you choreograph the homecoming routine? We met together like three weeks before, or not three weeks, three days before practice. And we just kind of listened to the music and figured out. Catherine was really good about Bring out all the counts and stuff. And then yeah, we just made sure that the moves lined up with the counts in the song, especially since we had cut some of the song out. And figure out where to put stunts and what stunts we wanted to do. Thank you.
Hi, I'm with Coach Dent here, and we're going to talk about the new class spotlight leadership. Coach Dent, why was this class created? Um, the class was created to give uh, our students an opportunity to study and learn about uh, leadership in a more specific um, classroom setting. And after we asked several students uh, last year um, over the semester if they'd be interested, we got some really positive feedback. And there were several kids that were interested in uh, taking it to find out. And lastly, why should a student take this elective? Students should, um, it's a good opportunity for uh, our students to take this class and kind of learn, I think, at a young age, uh, a little bit about what leadership is and what it looks like across many different fields, whether it just be in sports, uh, business, um, just or in life, um, you know, around the school yourself, just how you can conduct yourself as a leader. It's a great learning opportunity, I think, uh, for students. And if you want to be a leader, this class is for you. This is Stevens with the CCHS Newsroom, and today I'm interviewing Ms. Smith so we can talk about the eSports club and how they are doing. So, Ms. Smith, the first question of the day is what games do you guys play in eSports? Yeah, so fall titles specifically are going to be Overwatch, which is a competitive multiplayer game, and uh, Smash Solos, so Smash Brothers Ultimate, and they play them alone. So, knowing those are your fall games, Overwatch first, how are you guys doing? Like, otherwise, who have you played? Have you won those matches? Yeah, so we have a seven to eight week season and we're currently, we just finished week four. So we have won three of the matches. One of the weeks was a bye. So we've won all three of our matches so far. We've played Knox County, uh, we've played Blue Springs High School and Hickman High School. So knowing that, are you tied or what's going on? We are currently tied for first with Columbia Independent. Um, and we play them in two weeks. So in two weeks, we will know if we are coming out on top for the season or if we will drop a little bit in the standings. But so far, so good. So Overwatch is doing well, but what about Smash Solos? How many kids are doing that and how well are they doing? Yeah, so we have three kids in Smash Solos who are one of them. We also have Wyatt Wagner and um, Zayden Halbert. So currently, we've got about 15 kids to a group. Um, Wyatt is currently in third for his group, which is very good. Destiny, you are in sixth. Um, I believe, and then Zayden's just a little bit below that. I don't need the exact standing, but very well so far because um, it's a big group of kids to be high in the standings for. So it sounds like eSports is going pretty well for this fall, and I think that's it. Thank you for allowing me to interview for this. Yeah, no problem. I'm Coach Dent. A uh, quote that I thought about sharing today was one from one of my favorite coaches, Bob Knight. And he says that the will to succeed is important, but what's more important is having the will to prepare. And what that means to me is that a lot of people, most people do have a desire that they want to be successful and they want to have success, but it's more difficult to do the little things um, required in preparation to put yourself in a position to be successful. Um, so really success is 
not just a final destination, but it's all the things that you do in preparation, um, preparing to be successful. Um, and it's a lot more difficult to do all those little things and prepare, whether it's studying for the test, um, focusing on having good practices and do all the tough work um, before success is actually recognized. Hi, I'm Ireland Perry, this year's Old Settlers Queen. I'm 14 in ninth grade and originally from Coca, Missouri. I'm so glad I get to represent my town with this title. Thank you. I'm here with Drew Holstead, a senior on the trap team. He's been all four years of his high school career. Now, Drew, what is trap shooting? Trap shooting is where uh, you have a team of five guys. You go out on a line 16 yards from the house, and there's little clay birds that we call it. They go, uh, they shoot out of the trap house, and you shoot 25 times, best out of 25. Now, uh, can you give me a quick sum up of the season? Uh, in my opinion, I think we had the best trap team in school's history. We got second in state and third in districts. And uh, what are you going to do to encourage other people to do trap? Uh, it's a lot of fun. You know, it's really kind of stress-free. And hanging out with Mr. Oiler is always a very fun time. He is a fun man. And uh, what is your favorite place to shoot and the best ever you've ever shot? Uh, I would say Bosco's in Lancaster. I shot a 96 there. And then I shot a 96 in West Quincy this year for districts. And finally, uh, what has been your favorite memory of trap? Uh, probably shooting with my brother. I was a senior this year, and uh, he was a freshman. Thank you. Yep. Hi, my name is Aiden Jones. I shoot trap for Clark County FFA. My highest shoot this year was at Bosco's at the area trap shoot, and I shot a 75 straight. I encourage the younger students to shoot trap because it's a good way to get involved with FFA. I'm Kai. And I'm Macy, and we're going to be talking about softball. Our coaches this year are Coach Parker and Coach Ross, and this year's seniors are Aaron Bash, Maggie Weaver, Briley Schaefer, Shaley Lindsay, and Jalen Barnett. And our senior manager is Taylor Shantz. We are here with Miss Ross, and she is an assistant softball coach. And we're going to be asking her a couple questions. Uh, do you enjoy being a softball coach? I do. I have really enjoyed the season. We are rolling into districts this week. And yeah, I've enjoyed being the softball coach yeah. tremendously. Uh, next question. What made you want to coach? I wanted to coach because I played softball in high school. I really enjoyed the sport, but I kind of wanted to get to know it on a different level. And I have, I have achieved that. And what are some things that you've learned this year? Um, I've learned a lot. Um, a lot of logistics within the game that as a player I did not really pay attention to, that I should have, but now I know as a coach. And I've learned a lot about the girls, which has been great. All righty. Thank you. You're welcome. The Lady Indian pitchers are Aaron Bash, senior, Ava McKay, junior, Grace Parker, freshman, and Emma Pitford, freshman. The players with the best batting averages are Jasmine James, Katie Ayer, and Isabella Irvin. One of this season's highlights was whenever Briley Schaefer hit an absolute nuke over the fence on senior night. I'm Destiny Stevens with the CCHS Newsroom, and today I'm interviewing Miss Hop for the YWEC club. Do you just do it at like softball games, or what other sports do you do it at? So we actually began our hair tinsel fundraiser as almost experimental, just to see if people would uh, be interested in investing in that at the pink basketball game last year. Um, I believe it was in February or March. Um, and so it went pretty well. And then we decided to do it at the pink softball game, pink football game, which landed on the same week this past week. Um, and so we've only been doing it at pink softball games, but I know we're discussing it for potentially around like the holiday season to raise further money, especially during that time when people might need more resources. Hey, other than you know, your softball game, how much money have you raised in general from each of your games? So at last year's basketball game, which was our first event, we raised $150. So we were really proud of that being the first event. And then the softball game was 120. And then this past Friday at the football game, which usually has, you know, just more attendance with the band being there as well, um, we raised $260 to donate. That is a lot of money for this little, this fund. Other than, you know, the hair tinsel itself, when are the meetings for YWC? Great question. Um, Usually in the fall and really through the entire year, it is so busy. Um, mornings tend to be the best time for meetings, but you've got morning band this time of year. So we're working around that, um, which is great. I mean, we want to be flexible with students' schedules. So Mondays and Fridays tend to be the days that our meetings will land on. 
Um, this coming Friday, we had some scheduling conflicts. So our next meeting is going to be Friday, October 20th, 730 in the morning. So hopefully that's a free Friday for anyone who is interested in attending. Where can you find the meetings? Oh, great. Um, so the meetings are going to usually be in the high school library. We tend to put up flyers right before, about a week before the meetings to let people know um, when they would be. If anyone's interested in attending meetings, the more specific updates are on our Google Classroom. So they can email me, Mrs. Hop, ehop at clarkcounty.k12.mo.us, and I will add them to the Google Classroom so they'll get updates on the events. I think that's it for this time around. Thank you for allowing me to interview me. You're so welcome. Thank you so much. The Clark County Key Club hosted a cornhole tournament October 1st. Uh, Josh and Jarrett Burgess took home second, while Tristan Pitford and Drew Holstad took first. I'm here with Hannah Lapsley and Riley Bartles interviewing them about the CC Trading Post. So, how are the items made? First, we make the designs on the Cricut app or on the printer. And then after they're made, we will put them on the shirt by putting them through the printing press. Where do the funds go? This is a nonprofit organization, and so the little money that we do make goes back into the organization for products. When and where is your next setup? We will be set up at the Senior Night Football Game, October 20th at 6 p.m. We make many cool things like these two shirts, a crew neck, baby clothes, keychains, and even bracelets. We had a tough game against South Shelby with the final score being 44 to 14. South Shelby taking the win. Our homecoming king and queen were Connor Westcamp and Jalen Barnett. Our senior attendant was Aaron Bash. Our junior attendant, Jasmine James. Sophomore attendant, Dakota Kirshner. And our freshman attendant, Maggie Wheeler. For the first Powder Puff game of the night, the seniors beat the freshmen. With the next game, the juniors beating the sophomores. In the finale, the seniors brought it all home, beating the juniors. I'm here with Carly Pro, who participated in the Powder Puff event as a senior. How many years have you participated in the Powder Puff event? I've done all four years of high school. And have you had a favorite year? This year is my favorite because we got to win. Okay. And would you recommend this to freshmen coming in next year and people who didn't participate this year? Yes, because it's a really fun way to just get to know everybody and have fun. Thank you. We're with Lauren Hines today who played as a freshman in the Powder Puff event and we're going to be asking her a few questions. As a freshman who participated in Powder Puff, how do you think that went? It was definitely a lot of fun and it was a great experience for everyone and very competitive because I realized in that game that we're all very competitive girls and it was definitely a lot of fun. And do you think you'll come back next year? Yeah, I definitely will. And would you recommend this to freshmen coming in next year or anybody who didn't participate this year? Yes, I would definitely because you get yourself out of your comfort zone. Okay, thank you. Thank you for watching the CCHS newscast of the first quarter. Stay tuned for more videos to come. CCHS News Host, out.